Hello everyone, it is Wednesday and I am going to tackle the Tumblr thing. I can't believe I'm doing this. I can't believe how ridiculous this whole thing is. But at the 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 core of the ridiculousness, uh, if you, you put away all the shrieking and stupidity and rending of garments, there's actually a really interesting conundrum that made me chuckle. So I'm going to point that out. If you like this content, help support this channel, become a monthly patron, patreon.com slash Leanna K, precisely because social media platforms like Tumblr, like YouTube are constantly changing content guidelines. And so creators like me suffer sudden and unexpected demonetization, not because we're doing any dif anything differently or dirty, it's just somebody somewhere decided to change a policy because some somebody somewhere else changed a policy and, and there's this whole domino effect. For people who haven't been following the internets and just want a quick summary, Apple banned Tumblr from its app store because of its adult content, allegedly. Best anyone can tell. Um, or best the sources I read could tell. Maybe there's some people that know better. Um, and so Tumblr, as a reaction to try to get back in the app store because Apple is a is a walled garden, it's a closed system. So, you know, if you can't get an app for your iPhone or your iPad on the app store, well, then it might as well not exist to you. Um, so, you know, the the act of removing an app like this is is serious stuff. And one could understand why Tumblr would take this step now. This, this takes us in very many places, but my first kind of things that make you go, hmm, I wonder if Apple's app store still has the HBO Go app, because there's a lot of, in Tumblr's words, female presenting nipples on HBO. So I have my iPad here, and uh, let's go to the app store and see if HBO Go is still there. And I am aware of how many boobies there are on HBO, which to me stands for, hey, boobs out, because I'm, I'm catching up on Game of Thrones, a show my husband won't watch, and he's, uh, he's touring right now, so uh, I'm catching up on it. But let's see, HBO Go, here we are. <laughs> the first thing that pops up is Game of Thrones Conquest, Amazon Prime Video, which has quite a bit of nudity itself. Huh, maybe because I'm in Canada. Let's try HBO Canada. HBO Canada. Huh, is it gone? This would be very interesting. There's Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones. No HBO. Ver have they yanked HBO? CBS All Access. Oh no, here we go. HBO VIP. That's what they call it here. HBO VIP streamer. They've just changed the name of it. All right, so there it is, see? HBO VIP, it's right there. All the boobs HBO can possibly offer you. Let me see, stream video content from their catalogs on the go, either on an iPhone or an iPad. So you have Boardwalk Empire, which is boobies. You got your Game of Thrones, which is boobies. Apple is, is not censoring every app that delivers adult content. I'm sorry, there are scenes in Game of Thrones that are soft core porn. You know, immediate close-ups of Daenerys' nipples and, and two women going at it, making porn noises while some dude is, is doing some big uh, uh, monologue about, about his motivations and stuff. There is porn on Game of Thrones. I mean, HBO, that's how they cultivated their male audience. Right? And of course, girls. The Lena Dunham show, kind of known for fairly graphic displays of, I'm not sure what that is. I stopped watching girls a long time ago. I just couldn't take it. But see, this is, this is the problem with what Apple's doing. It's not treating all media as equal. It's treating services that are primary primarily user-generated content like Tumblr is somehow worse than, you know, big Hollywood productions, even though the content is essentially the same. And one would argue 
that HBO being more like traditional television has a greater normalizing effect on, on people's perceptions than, than Tumblr, which has a lot of porn, but it has, um, more, more subversive, more sort of non-conforming stuff going on there. Whereas as HBO has that definite kind of, um, you know, male viewership slant, but it's also incredibly heteronormative, right? What, one of the things I've, I've noticed about HBO stuff is that women just, two people are, two people will be having sex and the woman will be completely naked and the guy will still have his pants on. And I've noticed that's actually different from services like um, Showtime or AMC that have, Showtime especially, I mean, if you watch a show like Penny Dreadful comparing it to, to Game of Thrones, there's a lot more man-ass on Penny Dreadful. It's, it's very much um, uh, sort of equal opportunity nudity. And, and that's the sort of stuff I, I think we should be talking about more than just ban the female presenting nipples. And if you don't believe me that they actually say female presenting nipples, I, I will show you the Tumblr blog post that talks about female presenting nipples. Here we go. See? Where is it? Adult content down here. Don't upload images, videos, or GIFs that show real life human genitals or female presenting nipples. Female presenting nipples, nipples, folks, we have a new aggressive navel. And I actually have something of an issue with this. I have, I have had an issue with female toplessness being considered scandalous for quite some time now because it becomes a problem, you know, puritanism aside, it becomes a problem when it comes into women being able to breastfeed um, and this is important because women being able to breastfeed is a, in public is a big thing about having a life when you have a newborn. Um, you know, sometimes you, you can't go to a completely private area. And I mean, when I was a kid, hey, it was a 70s when I was, when I was a wee thing, right? But it, it was almost more okay, probably was more okay back in the 70s. And keep in mind... I lived in Tennessee at this point. Okay, Knoxville, Tennessee, hardly, you know, a bustling urban metropolis in the north. Um, and it it wasn't that odd for people to just sort of, you know, drape a, a towel over them. You know, you didn't see anything, but, you, you know, you breastfed in public. Now this causes a big hairy deal if, if a woman breastfeeds in the mall. And I think this is absolutely ridiculous. There is nothing more natural than breastfeeding. And I know some people get mad at that because some women can't breastfeed because of mastitis and it's breastfeeding shaming or whatever the heck you call that. But but it's true. I mean, this is the way we evolved as a species. All, you know, mammals feed their young from milk of some kind. What's actually weird about humans is that we continue to drink the milk of other of other creatures, you know, cow's milk, goat's milk, sheep's milk, into adulthood. That's the weird part. Not a kid, you know, suckling. Not a kid breastfeeding. The fact that we have made this a dirty thing is not natural. It's not the way nature intended it. This is social norms and a, quite frankly, an attempt by the powers that be to, to subjugate and control the sex urge. And I think we're, we're living in, despite all the, you know, Tumblr feminism, the Tumblr activism, ironically, we are living in an exceptionally Puritan age. We are living in an age that is really, in, in some areas, just completely being anti-creative rights, making bodies dirty things, shaming certain types of female bodies, shaming a lot of types of male bodies. That's one of the things I, I, I was getting into that I noticed on, um, on Game of Thrones especially, that if it's a heterosexual guy, especially an older heterosexual guy, the nudity is, is for laughs or as some sort of shock. 
And I don't like that because the idea that the male body is, is ugly and the female body is somehow more beautiful or that, that only people with perfect physiques should, you know, be having sex or, or, or displaying themselves that way. That, that's, that's got real issues socially. You know, people end up getting really messed up about sex people end up getting these these hang-ups and poor self-esteem and and a lot of frustration and anger because the world goes out of its way to make everybody feel like crap so we'll buy stuff it's that beauty industrial complex i was talking about again you make the thing that is most expensive considered the most beautiful so people have to spend a lot of money to attain that standard that's been the way beauty has been for men and women as far back as human history goes you know whatever whatever is the most expensive whether that be being overweight or being stick thin and looking anorexic or having pale skin or having tanned skin um you know the the pale skin versus tan skin thing jump the pale skin was considered you know, the beauty standard when the noble lady stayed indoors and the, and the commoners worked the field. So anybody with a tan was seen as working stock and therefore it was lower class. When Europeans started summering, started vacationing uh, on, on Rivieras, on coasts and spending time at the beach, all of a sudden a tan was seen as healthy and beautiful and glowing. And uh, pasty girls like me started getting a hard time because I can't tan. Um, and so again, it's why the change? Well, because being able to vacation was something that was only available for the, uh, the well-to-do. It wasn't until, um, you know, train lines and more affordable family vacations and labor laws that, that allowed paid vacation that everybody could sort of have a vacation uh every so often until you know the 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 powers that be started clawing those back through the gig economy too um and and it's funny because those sort of um sexual liberation that happened in the 1960s and 70s has started to be clawed back not not that the sexual revolution of the 60s and 70s was entirely healthy i don't want to make that um uh you know i don't want to make it seem like that there were problems with it there there was an intense pressure there's always an intense pressure to conform to these very very rigid um uh, sexual and appearance norms and I don't like those because it just hurts too many people I think that if you're not hurting anybody and anybody's on everybody's on the same page um, it's really good that we don't have the same issues with you know women being shamed for not being a virgin when we get married unfortunately we're still working out what exactly that means in society and and you know i think the the me too stuff is a is an extension of that we've we've sort of all right so everybody's having sex with everybody they want we have birth control and and we're sort of getting diseases kind of under control and so now we're dealing with this issue of consent and what consent means and and you know because nobody should be coerced into it and i i hope Eventually, once the, the pendulum sort of swings on this into something more more um, reasonable, uh, we'll, we'll be able to talk about men feeling pressured and men feeling coerced and, and people who are um, not, you know, that don't fit neatly into any gender category. I feel like in this whole Me Too thing, the whole discussion of um, uh, the the... I know trans people are a tiny minority, but the stuff involving um, sex relationships, sexual violence and stuff like that with trans people, it's still very poorly understood and transsexuality isn't normalized yet. And 
Unfortunately, we were starting to sort of take baby steps towards that. And then this whole Me Too thing happened. It became this thing synonymous with women for some godforsaken reason. Because, I mean, people forget Kevin Spacey was one of the first really big names who turned out to be a serial, disgusting piece of garbage. And his victims were men. So... I don't know how it became this this women's thing. Maybe somebody decided it was more marketable that way. I don't know, but it seems very artificial to me. As does this um, uh, Tumblr thing driven by Apple. And you can tell it's a reactionary policy because it's so dumb. The fact that Tumblr didn't go, well, why do you have HBO on on your store but we're not allowed to be on your store half of hbo is like dirty comics and and you know bordering on softcore porn um that's how i would have argued it that apple is apple is enforcing its its so-called policies um inconsistently if I were Tumblr, I'd fight that. Well, I took a bit more time to try to figure out what do we do about the fact that there is a lot of porn on Tumblr. And this is where I come to the second part of this. And I'll try to be quick about this because I've already spent 16 minutes, but I felt like goofing around because I goof around. Um, this is the other part that I find so fascinating. And this is where I'm like, all right, this makes me giggle. Tumblr is sort of known as the social media platform that became the place for young women. Uh, I don't have the stats in front of me. I, I read it earlier, but there's a majority, not just a sizable portion, but a majority of Tumblr's user base is, is women under the age of, I believe it's 26, is uh, the average age. Um, but anyway, young women. And it's full of porn. Like it is full of nudity. It is full of sexuality. It is full of porn. And the internet is for porn. I can't help it. Uh, that, that, I was reading the articles earlier and go, me up all night, honky me horn for porn, porn, porn. Just because I love Trekkie Monster. And I was just singing it. Uh, because, but this, and, and this makes absolute sense to me having studied female predominant um, groups like this for quite some time. Um, I was fascinated back in the day when those like live journal role playing games and stuff like that um, were were proliferating. Back when live journal was a thing, it those games were full of smut, and these were predominantly female. And I, I was fascinated by this because you know coming from the video game space, the online, the traditional online gaming space it was hard to see what would happen naturally if a female dominated um, group was was playing, was doing something interactive together. And, and it, it seemed the answer based on what I observed was a lot of freaking porn um, or, or sexual circumstances. And that's why when this theory came out that if we want video games to be more appealing to women, well, you gotta take the tits out and you gotta take the sex out and everything's gotta be chaste and fully clothed and women are dressed appropriately. Uh, I knew it was wrong. It didn't make any sense because I observed that when women got to choose what they did, it, it tended to be, you know, male, male slash stuff. But it was, it was porn horrific. There was porn all over the place. And I mean, it was interesting because it was people taking, it was, it was women. This was just my observation. It's unscientific. It was from a journalistic perspective, not an academic one. But what I observed was women um, using male characters to not only defy gender roles, that there seemed to be this feeling of freedom, both socially and sexually, performing as male, as opposed to, to female, because this was, I guess, this was a while back, so uh, hookup culture was just kind of getting started, but there's still, you know, that slut thing that guys don't get, and so there seemed to be this, this performance going on where, not only were women um, shaking off the kind of suppressed 
sexuality that comes with proper femininity, but also they were using male characters to subvert gender norms. So, you know, there was a lot of crying and a lot of sensitive men and all this stuff. And it, it was really hard not to judge. It was, thank God I took anthropology because of cultural relativism, cultural relativism. Um, cause I'm a gamer. Okay. Like this was co complete anathema to me, but it's, it was very interesting. And I'm glad I bothered to study that precisely because all this wrongness started up. So what to, to summarize and kind of compact, what this this Tumblr thing has shown is that women not only are not offended by sexual and pornographic content in an interactive environment, they seek it out. They produce it, they consume it when they have a choice. And yeah, it's a bit of a problem if you're checking Tumblr at work, which why would you check Tumblr at work? But like scroll, 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 boob at work. You know, to me, the, the the it's called not safe for work for a reason. And if Tumblr is just a not safe for work thing, then don't use it at work. It seems really simple, but people work longer and longer hours. And a lot of people I know with my YouTube stuff, it's amazing how many people watch content at work. Hi, people watching at work, um, releasing stuff at night, which I initially tried to do. Now, it might be because people are watching streams at night. I don't know, but I find my content um, does best if I put it out sort of on the lunch hour. So I guess people watch during lunch, not during work hours. That actually kind of makes sense. But so moving back to video games, the fact that People are freaking out and, and ironically of all places, freaking Vox is protesting this. Vox, the service that alongside its, you know, its sublabel Polygon, gaming so bad, it's so bad to women, porn, 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 bad in games. They're protesting. I'll put a link to this article if you want to. Lengthy, lengthy thing about how important the the subversive there. Tumblr has always been a safe space for subversive deviance and unrepressed explorations of identity and sexuality. What do you think video games are, guys? Like you you may think it's it's just about sort of hard bodies getting it on, but there's a lot more to that because it's the player who is usually, you know, a guy who's been rejected by society because they are not a hard body. They're able to, to control the hard body or explore um, the hard body getting it on. And it's safe and no one's mocking them. And remember that thing I said about, you know, uh, imperfect male sexuality being played for laughs or, or disgust? Video games get around that, you know, and and I I would like to see more body types and body types. I'm not saying things that don't make any sense, like a, a person who is a mercenary for a living and is, you know, hiking miles and miles and miles on foot every day. They they would not look like somebody who sits at a desk. They would be fairly fit people, but not all fit people are, are built the way they make people in video games look. I, I would like to see a greater diversity. I know there are costs associated with the the animation, but even that I'm kind of like, I don't buy that anymore because things are more and more mo-capped now. Uh, they're motion capture libraries, so all they have to do is, is get a person that is a different body type, and they're starting to do it. I mean, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, with Cassandra is doing it. Um, uh, and I mean, for years we had different body types with men. It was just that. And I, I'm gonna take a flyer here and say that yes, it was partially developers, male developers being kind of idiot pervs, but I don't think that was all of it. I think that there was an element of, how do I put this? Video games during that cinematic phase when graphics were shooting up in quality and, and, you know, it was a big, it was a great idea to be cinematic and look like a movie until people realized, wait, that's kind of boring because that means you're spending a lot of time watching a game instead of playing a game. 
but they were borrowing a lot of uh, visual language, a lot of imagery from movies. And unfortunately, that lack of diversity and body type in women um, does originate in things like movies. Not so much TV, because that's considered more a, a working class medium. You know, you have... Um, suburban moms and things like that in tv shows there aren't very many movies made about suburban moms like blockbusters and stuff like that suburban dads different story they're they tend to be you know thrust into into special circumstances and things like that but a focus on a, on a mom not so much in films because as we've talked about in the west i should correct in the west japan is very different it's very hard to get a blockbuster movie in japan without a female protagonist and if you, you look at Japan, they have much more female body diversity in all their mediums. Doesn't mean it's not idealized. It's that there are six or seven different ideals at any one time instead of just one. That's what I'm talking about. And that's what subversive sexualized content does. It, it broadens out the, um, the ideal that is, that is accepted by society is normalized. And by taking away Tumblr's ability to explore that, uh, the, the, the progressive left, and by that I mean the socially progressive left, not the economic left, is freaking out now. But, but they've been pushing for this in video games for years. Like the only game that seemed to not be a problem was, uh, what is it, Dream Daddy? Because they're not women. These, these so-called progressives in gaming seem to have a, a real misogynist streak in their female advocacy. And it, it, there, there is no way to square that circle. There is no way to make the reaction, the reaction that the, the online progressive left, the social justice left has had to this Tumblr thing. There is no way to square that with the way they've covered video games. The only, the only thing that fits is they demonized video games and they've made their, they've made their theories conform to a predetermined outcome based on this is for men, therefore it is bad, which is completely misunderstanding so-called male gaze theory. The problem that Laura Mulvey pointed out in the 1970s with male gaze is the problem is that Things that were supposed to be for men and women were made predominantly with visual cues for men. Not that things for men were inherently bad. The problem was that, that the gaze, the, the perception, the way of viewing the world, the way people even looked at themselves was only male. There was no feminine included in it. So women were stuck watching a bunch of stuff that even when it was allegedly for women, things like women's magazines and cookbooks and all that stuff, it was, it was still told with a visual language that was what men thought about women, not what women thought about ourselves or other women. That was the problem with it. Not that stuff for men was inherently bad. Unfortunately, that's got perverted. And now it's just, well, if it's male dominated, it's bad. And so, uh, you know, oh, if there's boobs in The Witcher, if there's sex in The Witcher, that's automatically bad. But Tumblr porn, no problem. That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense. You can't argue that the, the sexuality, the nudity itself is the problem in these video games and then get upset when Apple makes Tumblr pull the, the plug on the porn, right? You help create this social justice outraged. You made this go. You are the ones responsible for all those negative ads that triple, trickle out into the mainstream and frighten soccer moms. And they're the ones who are like, the internet is destroying my children's minds. Fortnite is making them crazy. There are boobs in Fortnite. No, there aren't. But that's the opinion that every video game everywhere, every piece of technology, any screen time whatsoever is terrible to the developing mind of the little angel. And because, you know, Apple's entire reason for existing is to sell overpriced, 
overcomplicated phones and, and tablets to people who don't know crap about technology, they have to be very, very careful not to piss off the soccer moms. Because the soccer moms all have their iPhones because they're easy to use for people who aren't great about tech. They don't customize at all. It, it Using the iPad, I, I got an iPad so I could review iPad games. That's the only reason I have an iPad. I use it to play like some sleep inducing games, you know, those match three games, Facebook type things. Um, and it's, uh, I use it as a, as a wireless television cause I have that app, but, uh, yeah, I, I got it because at the time there were all these iPad games coming out. Now that is a completely different player base. So some soccer mom playing homescapes or gardenscapes or townville on her iPad is not going to encounter AAA content. It's not the same consumer base, it's not the same player base at all. So why should the fears of soccer moms, just I'm just picking soccer moms because it's an evocative image, don't get pissed off about that. Um, but why should the, the concerns of soccer moms dictate the content in AAA video games that they're not playing? Because services like Vox and these, these progressive, I, I disagree, they actually are truly progressive, but progressive identify, progressive presenting, <laughs> like female presenting nipples. Um, the, uh, they have been the ones leading the charge that this stuff is bad, it's harmful, and it must change. Well, you thought that was going to stop at video games? No. The places that are going to be most concerned about that stuff is outside core AAA gaming in into the realm where people who don't understand technology nearly as much exist and, and proliferate and spend money. And the Apple App Store is where those people are. What did you expect to happen, Vox? What did you expect to happen, Tumblr? As much as I disagree with the decision, I can't deny that you guys, you guys help fester this. You guys help cultivate this witch hunt against sex and sexuality. Don't like it so much when it's happening to you, do ya? I'll leave it there because this was already really long, but thanks for watching and a uh, special Thursday video tomorrow. Yay. Uh, patrons will still get their, their own, probably another lying on the floor with cats. If you're wondering what lying on the floor with cats is, it's me lying on the floor with cats. I spray catnip so they all walk around and climb all over me. And Loki eats the catnip, the dog. Um, so if you want that, help support this channel, become a monthly patron, patreon.com slash Leanna K. Thanks for watching.